Suppose you sit in a beer garden. Beautiful weather and you have ordered a beer, the beer comes, you put it on the table and then you touch the table and the table is unstable and the beer uh, is poured out and you are angry. It's a four leg table, the table is completely stable. The problem is the ground on which the table stands. This is not flat and that's why one leg is above the ground and then if you put your hands against the table, it goes down and this is the instability of the table. The normal solution is we take a sheet of paper, uh, for example, this paper which is under our beer glass and put it under this leg and for a while it looks okay. But after a few minutes we are angry again because of this paper is compressed a little bit and instability again. And we hate that. Mathematicians never have unstable tables. They know what to do. And what you do is very, very simple. Turn the table. You start moving the table and try to turn it so that you have a quarter of a turn. And on the way of your turning, there will be a moment where it's absolutely stable. So you just rotate it like you rotate a, like a rotating a disc? Or? Yes, I rotate the table like a disc and typically only uh, a few centimeters are needed and suddenly it's stable. And this is not by chance, this, there is a mathematical proof that this will always happen. You're going to have to give me that proof now. I give you <laughs> that proof now. Here is the ground and here this is the position of the four legs and we enumerate them. This is leg one, this is leg two, this is leg three, this is leg four. And suppose that leg one is above the floor, whereas these three are fixed on the ground. Now of course if we put pressure on one then we see the instability. And now we do the following. We measure the height of leg one. We remember, we always measure the height of leg one. So if we do that in time, then we get associated to time t, we associate height of leg one. So at time zero, we get some t equals zero, we get some number, say, uh, x larger than zero. Now this was, nothing has happened, now we start moving and we do that obviously in time and at each time we measure the height of leg one and we turn it in this way. Yeah? So we turn it so that we try to bring leg one into the position of leg two. At each time we measure the height of leg one. So this gives a function f of t. Yeah? For each time t we measure. Here's something important. We, it can happen that if we fix, we always fix two, three and four. This we remember. We fix two, three and four and now it could happen that the height of leg one is negative. Yeah? because of, and this will happen, if we have put now leg one into position of leg two, leg two to the position of leg three, leg three to the position of four, and leg four is at the position where leg one was. But now we remember that we fix the position of two, three, and four. I fix them on the ground. I keep them on the ground. And since when we did it here, we had in this position, this was above the ground, and now we force these three to be on the ground, that means this position has to be under the ground. Yeah? You, you see that if you, before you have fixed these three, it's above, now you force this to go down, and this is suddenly under the ground. So at time one, let's suppose we take 
uh, time interval one until we at this position. So at t equal one, this height is negative. So now we draw, if I get a new sheet of paper. Now we draw this curve. So this is time zero. This is time y. Here we draw the height. And at time zero, the height was something positive. And at time one, the height was negative. So this is f of zero. This is f of one. And now at each time t, we get the position of the height. And you see we get a curve. Well, it might go even up and down, but in the very end, it has to end here. And now comes the famous theorem of mathematics, the mean value theorem, which just says that if you have a continuous function, which is positive here and negative here, there must be a position where it is zero. It could be multiple, but at least... It could be, you can, you can have fun with it, you turn your table further and there might be a second position where it is stable. You don't need that, but it's fun to try that out uh, if you are in the beer garden. And if you do it the next time in the beer garden, you will see easily fixed the table. And you will be pleased and the beer tastes even better. I do it all the time. Whenever I'm in a beer garden or even in a restaurant, often the ground is not flat. And uh, I sit there with my friends and they uh, are uh, uh, saying, ah, let's put this under. I say, don't do it. I move it just a little bit. And they are always very surprised. And it will not change. And then it's fixed for the whole evening. What if the tables are all lined up or a special shape or something? Oh, that's, that's of course, the mathematics is always theoretical. So if you cannot move the table, you have uh, to use the old traditional thing with the paper.